Ferris Williamsburg is getting a new roller coaster. No, not that one. Not that one either. Something totally different. <laughs> yeah, this park is expanding at an insane rate. We're looking at Project 2024, which would be the third new roller coaster in back-to-back -back years. Pantheon, Project Dark Coaster, which is getting announced very soon. That's going in the Curse of Dark Castle building. And then we get to Project 2024. So originally this was codenamed Drakenspire. This was the big giga shuttle thing that uh, has was gotten stupid. a lot of people talking. It was stupid. Some people like it. Some people don't. It was stupid. It was stupid, yeah. So um, <laughs> not sugar -coated, the backstory stupid. behind that project is that um, originally before Pantheon, Busch Gardens was planning a big roller coaster that was going to stretch across the Rhine, and they essentially split it into two. Pantheon was one half, and then Drakenspire was going to be the other, because they said it's just not feasible to have it go across the Rhine, so we're going to just build two separate roller coasters. And they felt they really had a shortage of swing launch coasters. Because, <laughs> you know, having three is a totally normal amount. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, anyways, now it looks like we might be seeing a completely different project in that plot of land. We have a new height variance waiver that has been filed for a 220 foot tall amusement ride structure. Now the height restriction is not directly in the same exact spot as where this tallest point of Drakenspire would have been. However, it looks like this project will more than likely use Drakenspire's old station, which is where this would have gone, which means that that project would officially be dead. There's not really a way for these to coexist. No, um, okay. So yeah, if you want all of the details, I'll post the link to this article down in the description below so you can see this. But what we figured we'd do is, now that it looks like that might not be happening, we have to talk about what it could be, because we do have a couple options. But let's start out with what it's not gonna be. Yes, yeah, so number one that we've ruled out is a star flyer or like a, a sky coaster, something that isn't a roller coaster. So I won't lie, that was my initial thought, was like, okay, maybe they're finally gonna do the star flyer thing, but if you look at the plot of land, it's very far away from everything else, so it doesn't really make sense. Yeah, the only way I could possibly see that work is if they literally built an entire themed area in that section, and even then, I'm still, I still don't think that would make sense. Well, also, they're not really keen on spending a ton on theming right now, so I don't see yeah. them building an entire <laughs> themed area right no, now. No, I don't, I don't think so. So I, I don't think we're looking at that. And then, uh, let's kind of break this down by manufacturers. Number one that I don't think it's going to be is B&M. They have three already. Polish Chariot, Griffin, Alpengeist. I, I don't think so. Um, Although they are working with SeaWorld in Orlando right now. Like when you think about what B&M does that's like over 200 feet, they already, make they already have a hyper, they already have a dive. Yeah, so it doesn't really make much sense. And an invert. Like, so no. I, I Surf just, Coaster 2.0. Oh, no. <laughs> so I, I think we can rule out B&M. Um, I'm also going to rule so out... Vacoma and Gerslauer because we haven't really seen SeaWorld work with them recently and they also typically don't do projects of this scale. And when Gerslauer does do roller coasters over 200 feet like Karnan, it's like a vertical lift. This looks like it's gonna have a traditional lift tilt. So I, I think that we can probably rule that out. Uh, the other one that I don't think they're gonna go with this premiere. They do launch coasters. It looks like they might finally not be building a launch coaster. No way! Yeah, imagine, what a concept, right? I was thinking whoever was up there making the decisions was like, completely unaware that there were other types of roller coasters. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I think Drock Spire never made any sense in this park, so I think that even though this roller coaster will be shorter, it just, I think almost anything would be better. Drock Spire just, it wouldn't have worked. That's the thing, yeah. is like, the 300 foot thing is like a novelty if you just do yeah. something like that. Like if you do something like this like Spire thing. It but felt like, like they wanted the height record in Virginia just to beat King's Dominion. Yeah, just despite I-305, I but like, there's no way it was gonna be anywhere near as good as I-305. No. So it's like, there's, is there really a point? Yeah, really. so, all right, so let's talk about types of rides we could be seeing. One possibility I wanted to throw out there is something by Intamin, because this Drakenspire thing was gonna be Intamin. It's possible that they said, let's just do something different. We'll stick with the same manufacturer, but just do a different type of project. So like an Intamin Hyper, maybe. Yeah, so you're thinking something like Hyperion or? Yeah, Rakonda, you know? I mean, I think it would be different enough from Apollo's Chariot and you could work in different elements to make it not feel identical to Pantheon, you know? So My, just don't put it in like an outer bank, you know? I only wonder if maybe that's not the case because Pantheon's been like a little unreliable for them. Yeah. That if maybe they'd be like, mm, Do we want another intimate? Want another? But they're building an intimate next year with Exactly. Dark Coaster. It so seems that, like- But it seems like, what if that's why they dropped the third, uh, the th it's third possible. project? It's, it's possible, or they could just be on an intimate kick. So you could see it either way. It could really kind of swing launch either direction. 
Bad joke. No more swing matches. <laughs> um, something else that I thought of is SNS. SeaWorld has been working with them recently with their Scream and Swings. And if you look at the type of ride that they're going, I mean, you think of what Drakenfire was, this big multi-inverting roller coaster. What if this was a spiritual successor to that? And they went with something like Steel Curtain, where it's like 220 feet tall, and it's all these different inversions in the back of the park, but done right. I was going to say, Steel Curtain doesn't really impress me. No, it doesn't impress me either. Like, it's fine. But, it's yeah, fun. it's okay. But, like, the thing is, Busch Gardens Williamsburg is, like, a bunch of good rides and nothing that's really spectacular. And I feel like Pantheon was supposed to be that, and it didn't really end up being that. I think, person. yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah. It's I, a great, don't be wrong, it's a great ride, but, like, okay, let's think about Busch Gardens Tampa. They just put an Iron Wazi. Which brings us to RMC. That's their standout, holy hell ride. Yes. And Busch Gardens Williamsburg does not have that right now. And the Busch Gardens parks typically do things in pairs. If you look at their roller coaster lineup, there's something that counters a one park over to the other. I mean, literally what's going on right now, they're building a scream and swing at Busch Gardens Tampa. They just put that in at Williamsburg. They kind of mirror each other. So Iron Gwazi was pretty spectacular. Everyone's talking about how amazing that ride is. Could they be going with their own ground up hyper hybrid from RMC? I will literally pee myself. Lin no I'm gonna remember you said that. I Yeah, I will. I will pee myself whenever we find out if that's what's happening because <laughs> because Iron Gwazi might be the best roller coaster on the planet. You can make a dang good argument for it being one. I'm sure no one would be disappointed if that's what they went I with. I think it one would be different enough from every other ride there. I mean, the, again, the only elements that you kind of would want to watch if you if they did that is like an outer bank or a stall because Pantheon has those. But if you did different enough moments, you know, RMC has enough kind of elements and tricks that they pull oh, yeah. from that I think it's very doable. And I think that that's a pretty good amount of space there that you could put in a pretty cool ride in that plot of land. And it's them. it's different enough from Twisted Timbers because if they went with something that's 200 feet, I mean, Twisted Timbers are small. That's my only hesitation, honestly, with that theory. Is, yeah, is because there is an RMC an hour away. All right, let's have a conversation with uh, the state of Georgia then. <laughs> <laughs> the city of Atlanta. <laughs> okay. Clearly that's not all a All right, issue. all right. All now, right, do they go happen. single rail? All right, if I'm Busch Gardens Williamsburg and I'm looking at like, okay, how has the success been with the single rail coasters? Josie Devil, like people liked it, but yeah. Iron Gwazi has become like a craze. Yeah. Like not even just amongst enthusiasts. I feel I'm like most people, like the uh, single rails are great, but most people generally prefer the Ibox. Yeah. Coasters. I think the single rails shine when they're like the smaller compact versions. Mm -hmm. you and know? with this being a bigger ride, like I, yeah, it does kind of lend itself more to an Ibox. So that's definitely. Besides like a, yeah, like a, 200 foot single rail though i mean i, I could, think it's doable I'm not saying rmc it's not could doable. do it like I'm, let's be real absolutely like, <laughs> well they've already said that they could do that but yeah. the thing is it's like that'd be a, a prototype kind of that's definitely fair so last main manufacturer that i brought that that could be a possibility is mock so SeaWorld has worked with mock before we've seen them do uh cobra's curse at bush Gardens tampa manta at SeaWorld san diego and they do do hyper coasters now if they did yeah, go I, this route you said do do shut up uh <laughs> This would be the largest one. DC Rivals is 202 feet tall. So this would be absolutely massive if they went that route. Obviously, Manta and Cobra's Cross are family coasters. So yeah. this well, would be- I don't be... think this is gonna be a family coaster. <laughs> no, 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 no. So this is a very drastic step in a different direction. So that's my, my only hesitation with that. But man, that'd be pretty sick if that was what was coming. That would be really cool because, I mean, the only other option is to fly to Australia right now, which is yeah. a heck of a lot more work than to go and do Williamsburg. Now, we were talking about if they went with Mach, are there any other possibilities? And they, oh. they do have the extreme but spinner model. But they're not that big. Okay, so yeah. here's my thing. That was my number one vote of if I could pick anything for that park. Because when I think of the Mach extreme spinners, they're very elegant. Mm -hmm. Like, they're beautiful and they're, they're classy. They're expensive. So, like... I don't, one of those is never going to go to like a Six Flags or a family owned park most see. likely. Yeah. Um, it's going to be something big, like Bush Gardens. Like a SeaWorld park. Yeah, yeah. Or, exactly. And I feel like that, with like the level of kind of like class and elegance that you have at Bush Gardens Williamsburg, it would fit perfectly. It would. It, it would, would be perfect. I think that's, honestly, I would rather see that than I think any other option on this list. I as would much even as think it, that over at RMC. I think I would too, just because Twisted Timbers is an hour away. This is... 
the only spinning coaster in Virginia is at Funland at Fredericksburg. It's an SBF visa. So this is on a completely yeah. different level. Right now, if you want to do a, a mock extreme spinner, you can either go to Branson, Missouri, or whatever that town in Belgium was Depan. called. Depan, <laughs> Belgium. Honestly, they probably both take the same amount of time to get there, <laughs> given the circumstances of getting to Silver Dollar City. But that would make it so different from anything else within, like, a reasonable distance. So, yes. you know, I think it's perfect. But it's they, probably not going to happen. They did say that they, after doing Ride of Happiness, they realized they could go more extreme. But we're talking but like, double the height. Ride of Happiness is 108 feet tall. We're looking at 220. Like, I'm picturing the drop and, like, the experience of being on that. What is like a hundred something feet? It'd be I unreal. Can't, can't I just, I, I think it's, I think it's too much. I don't see it happening. No. So I think that of these options that we've suggested, I think that the RMC hyper hybrid does make a ton of sense. But if it's not that, then I do think it could be an Intamin. Like okay, that so they, we're stick, saying, they stick with the Intamin. We're saying likeliness, not yes. what we want. RMC, Intamin. I would say Probably then mock. Okay. And then SNS. Only reason SNS isn't higher is because I think that they are probably looking at the reliability of Steel Curtain. Like that thing's been having so many issues. So yeah. I'm, I I like think they're that, cool looking and all, but I think that if they're hesitant to go with another one, that's my guess. Or we could be completely wrong. And it is a star flyer <laughs> or a sky coaster. Yay! It's just Chalk Inspire, but they made it a hundred feet shorter. <laughs> I wanna hear from you guys down in the comments yeah, below. Yeah, seriously, please. Do you agree with the things that we brought up? Do you have any other suggestions? Do you think there's something we missed? <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.